Good morning, guys. We're coming to you from Cowpens, South Carolina. We're at the site of the Cowpens National Battlefield. It's a national park site here. Um, I know there's some sort of movie inside. There's like a looping, like three mile drive that goes around the battlefield, that kind of stuff, with some historical sites. So we're gonna stop and see all that. Probably check out the movie inside, check out the visitor center a little bit. Let's go make some memories. This big tall monument here. It says Congress of the United States caused this monument to be erected on the site of the Battle of Cowpens as a testimonial to the valor and appreciation of the services of the American troops on this field on behalf of the independence of their country. This was a Revolutionary War site. What does this site say? On this field, American troops under Brig Brigadier General Daniel Morgan won a significant victory over a British force commanded by Lieutenant Colonel. Benestre Tarleton, January 17th, 1781. Wow. All right, so the little one's doing her Junior Ranger book. So while she's doing that, I'm gonna video around here. He's talking about the militiamen before the Revolutionary War. The militia served as a peacekeeping force. They could quickly be gathered for short periods of time, recruited from local farmers and townspeople. And then these were the Continentals. This is the museum and theater entrance. So we're going to go into that in just a minute. This was Daniel Morgan. Nicknamed the Old Wagoner. And then there's a little tiny gift shop over here. And a little area in here. And that's pretty much it here. There's a walking trail that has like 14 points of interest out back. We're gonna try and walk that. It takes about 45 minutes. There's a quick movie in here and a looping drive trail as well. We're planning on doing all three things while we're here. Patriot Army. And they got some other weapons here. They got rifles, rifle balls, musket balls down here. Different sabers, bayonets. There's a cannon here. equipment you need to run the cannon, Royal Artillery, this is a reproduction of Pickens Sword, and this is one of the Continental or Paid Soldiers, mainly from Maryland and Delaware, and this is what they looked like, red, white, and blue. Dragoon uniform, which was Tarleton's legion. It's fighting for the British. And this is the 7th Regiment. 7th Regiment of Foot, also known as the Faciliers. Carried light muskets. Ah, that's what they wore. Interesting. There's some more. This is the British Army. Pistols. Their swords. And their muskets as well. So the lighting is not good on this. Just as the British troops arrive in a headlong rush, Tarleton's troops arrive at the Cowpens at dawn with dragoons on the front line leading the charge. The British Le Legion were quickly engaged in battle. Okay, so we just left the visitor center and now we're doing the little battlefield like walk that's out here. I think it takes about 40, 30 to 45 minutes to walk depending on how fast you are. I guess there's several things to read about and to learn about out here along the trail and we're trying to complete the little one's junior ranger book too and I know a bunch of the answers are supposed to be out this way. And I guess once we get past the trees, the tree line right here, once we get past that we will be where the battle took place, the battlefield. And the cra crazy thing was, is inside the visitor center, they have a short movie in there. Definitely recommend watching that. It's an 18-minute movie. And the cool thing is, at the very end, it tells you that in the time it took to watch this 18-minute movie, the battle was over. It was such a quick, quick uh, battle that took place. It was just so 
the strategy involved and, and everything. It was just, uh, everything turned so quickly. But if you come here, definitely watch that movie. It's very well done. All right, so let's go see what's out on this battlefield. All right, so this is talking about Morgan's Flying Army. It says Morgan's Army came from many states, the Carolinas, Delaware, Georgia, Maryland, Virginia. They were joined by militia, some of whom had helped destroy the British Army under Ferguson at Kings Mountain. They camped nearby without tents and nervously awaited the dawn. Can you imagine being out here, sleeping outside with no tent, just laying on the ground with your gun at your side and your weapons? Just awaiting the enemy. I love the National Park Service. They do such a good job with their facilities. The facilities are always well taken care of. The staff they have are always 99% of the time friendly. I encountered a couple that haven't been over the years, but that's their... Usually if somebody's working at the National Park sites, because it's what they love. See, it says Morgan chose this ground for its tactical advantages, a river to the rear to discourage the ranks from breaking rising ground on which to post his regulars, an open forest, and a marsh on one side to thwart, to thwart the wart? Flanking maneuvers. Easier said than done there. See, Tarleton, Tarleton and the British thought that this area was stupid of them to have chosen as a battle because they thought it was going to be an easy way for them to just slaughter the opponent and give them, as Tarleton used to say, no quarter. No mercy. Those who can't escape must die. All right, so this is the Washington Light Infantry Monument. This is something, this was erected in 1856, and it says it doesn't quite look the same as it did in its original state. It was badly deteriorated prior to the designation as a national battlefield in 1972. Wow, look what it looked like. Look how bad it looked. People mistreated it, and it just wore down over time. And now they made it look all nice. This has been here since 1856. This is the little monument to commemorate the occasion here cool this is out on that walking trail as you see here's the trail we're heading back to the visitor center now it takes about 45 minutes to walk this and then here's the sign that they put up for it let me kind of do a little 360 here from where i'm standing at this monument so you can see a little bit of the area here i see somebody reading a sign over there intently Some animal skins and animal skulls here. Bobcats, raccoons. Oh yeah. This is cool. Which one is that? As a junior ranger, I promise to learn about my country's national parks. How to preserve and protect my national park lands educate others about what I have learned from the National Park Service. All right, good job. Yay. All right. All right, so this is talking about from cow pasture to battlefield. This area got its name. It was locally known as the cow pens. I kind of wondered that before I got here, but it was because of the, the people used to bring their cattle here to, to feed, and they'd fatten them up before they'd take them to Charleston for sale. We learned that in the movie. That was very interesting. But yeah, this was the how it got its name. So this is our picnic area over here. 9 to 4.30. This is a most dreary appearance in 1849 journalist Journalist historian Benson Lossing traveled to the Scruggs family farm seeking information about the Cowpens battle. Using the house as a point of reference, he located fields within a quarter mile of the Scruggs where the battle raged more than a half century before. Journalist Lossing noted that the battlefield presence presented a most dreary appearance. Axe and plow had turned an open hardwood forest into stumps, pine thickets, and cornfields. So you see all the stumps there. So this is part of our drive here. This is the house. We're going to walk up there in just a minute. All right, the Robert Scruggs house. It says Robert Scruggs married Catherine Connell in 1828. And his father, Richard Scruggs, gave him 200 acres of land. They had 11 children and added on to the house as the family grew bigger. 
Life at the time was hard. The farmers raised corn, wheat, potatoes, and livestock, while the wives tended to household tasks such as spinning wool into yarn, rendering animal fat into soap, and maintaining a vegetable garden. Imagine living out here. Whew. We're also spoiled by modern technology for sure. Cute little house with a fireplace. Potatoes. Love me some potatoes. And this is the back side of the house. The little back porch back here as well. All right, guys. So here at the Robert Scruggs house, I'm wrapping up our little visit here to the Cowpens National Battlefield. It's a national park site. Hopefully you enjoyed coming along with us on this site. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to our channel so you can get future content just like this. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of our experience here. We loved coming here. It was kind of like one of those things we was on our iffy list for South Carolina, only if we had time. We were able to squeeze it in today on our last day here in the Greenville area. And definitely worth a visit. I would actually recommend driving to this area if you're within anywhere within 45 minutes to an hour. It's definitely a spot worth coming to because you'll learn a lot. Your children will get even something out of it as well. Good family stop. All right, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.